Red dragon? Oh no no no, I'm a lead dragon, baby. Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Now, if you've spent more than half an hour pretend shopping in an RPG, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We're all familiar with how long RPG sessions can last. I mean, most of the time you're having so much fun that you don't really care, but there's always those times where you feel your phone buzzing in your pocket. So of course you gotta check out those dank memes being sent in the group chat. But then when you put your phone down, all of a sudden the undead have flooded the world and a vampire is flossing over the corpses of your party. An inattentive player is a nuisance at best and wrath-inducing at worst. But if The Last of Us Part 2 has taught me anything, it's that a hack with access to a writer's room can ruin anything no matter how genre-defining it once was. And that revenge is bad. Oh my god, that game's become so irrelevant, I think this has to be the first time that an internet personality's brought up Abby and her freaky Donkey Kong arms in over a year. The story I have for you today stars a power gamer who willfully becomes ignorant to the DM's world building only for said DM to go nuclear and take a metaphorical golf club to their own campaign. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. This week's story comes from user Mammoth Warning and is titled, Inattentive Player Accidentally Propositions the Bad Guy's Army to Fight Against Themselves. When I think of most RPG horror stories, I think of train wrecks that you can see coming from a mile away. You know, situations that you know are gonna end badly, but you just keep hoping for the best until they inevitably crash into a wall. Not so with this tale. No, this is a story of a campaign amongst friends that was going quite well and how one sentence derailed it entirely. Some context. We were playing in a homebrew setting. If I had to sum up the campaign in one sentence, it would be World War II, but with vampires. Instead of camps, vampires were funneling other races into farms, where they would be kept alive but harvested for their blood to the point where they were basically comatose. Edgy campaign is edgy, I know. But we all signed up for it and we were all having a good time. Our party is a mix of races, but all of us can at least pass for races that are allied with the vampires. We are, however, part of the rebellion. Our party is given stealth or ambush missions, infiltration and espionage is the name of the game. One such mission finds us in a city that was recently taken over by the vampires. They're all celebrating in the streets, having just forced our elven allies to surrender. Our orders are clear cause chaos. We're tasked with causing as much confusion and panic in the city as possible, making it vulnerable for our troops to counterattack. Mechanic-wise, it worked like this. The DM had a counter that started at zero. Through our actions in the city, we had to get that counter up to 20. For example, I, a satyr bard, kick things off by joining the celebration and drinking in the streets. I found the highest ranking officer that I could and used a sleight of hand check to spike his drink with a flask of acid. I then goaded him into a drinking competition and the officer downed the whole thing without tasting it. He was rushed to a hospital and two points were added to the chaos counter. In turn, I faked like I had been poisoned as well to avoid detection later sneaking out of my hospital room to continue helping my team. As the chaos counter rose, security in the city was beginning to make things harder and harder to navigate, making it more difficult to achieve our goal the closer we reached it. Honestly, until everything went wrong, this was the most fun I had ever had in a session of D&D. We had one goal, but a million different ways to achieve that goal. How we did so was up to our own creativity. However, while we were trying to achieve this goal, our resident power gamer made a solitary mistake that, in one fell swoop, managed to kill his character, any interest he had in roleplaying, and this campaign in under a minute. For some context, our power gamer, we'll call him Gremlin because that was the name of his character in this campaign, was not a problematic one. He played D&D mostly to feel like a badass. As a result, all of his characters were heavy hitters in some way. This campaign, things were slightly different. He played a goblin artificer named Gremlin, who used a sniper rifle and made grenades. 
out. Kremlin was a glass cannon. He dealt massive damage from far away. But if you managed to get him in CQC, he was pretty much done for. Unlike most campaigns I'd played with him though, this time Gremlin really was getting into his character. He played his goblin as someone who was constantly trying to be charismatic, but failing miserably. As most things that came out of his mouth only showed what a paranoid shut-in he truly was. When it wasn't a life-threatening situation, he was constantly trying to make diplomacy and bluff checks that his minus two charisma modifier couldn't possibly back up. It was funny and slightly tragic and he was doing a great job. As such, the player was very attached to Gremlin, because Gremlin was the first time he was playing a character and not just himself. Resuming with the campaign session, the chaos counter was around 13 to 14 out of 20. Security was strict and we were relying on our two stealth-based characters, the Rogue and Gremlin, to finish us off. Gremlin noticed a bar full of what he thought was rebel soldiers, our allies, with no easy way into the bar. Locked doors, sandbags in the windows, etc, etc. So he hid in a barrel of ale that he thought was being brought inside through the back. Popped out once he was in the kitchen and asked the rebel soldiers, Who wants to crack some vampire skulls? So before we moved on, I've noticed that there's a sort of obsession with DMs dishing out justice to players in a lot of these horror stories. But I'm not entirely sure that's a good thing. Now I've read the title and I know that Gremlin is not going to make it to the end. But what is Gremlin's player going to do when his first attempt at role-playing is met with the death or dismemberment of his character? Well, I'm willing to bet that he's probably going to stop role-playing. It's like kicking a dog when it begs for table scraps. Yeah, the behavior is annoying, but afterwards everyone thinks that you're the asshole. The DM is not supposed to do their best Judge Judy impression to deliver justice in a flashy way. Their role is much closer to that of a referee whose calls match their perceived offenses. And I say offenses in big air quotes because at the end of the day, everyone is just trying to have fun. A referee's job is to make sure that everything goes by smoothly by making objective and appropriate judgments. Because nobody's going to be having fun at the Super Bowl if the referee starts using Molotov cocktails as penalty flags. It's not a controversial statement to say that there's a little bit of harmless manipulation that goes into being a DM. Rewarded behavior gets repeated, but punished behavior gets abandoned or doubled down on based on the person you're dealing with. So when you see a player going out of their way to come out of their comfort zone, there had better be a cookie on the end of that string. Whether that cookie comes in the form of inspiration tokens, character development, or in-game valuables is up to you. Gremlin, while he was finally getting into the role-playing aspect of D&D, still was not great at remembering details about the world he was playing in. Uh, fair enough. Our DM put a lot of effort into this setting, and there was a ton of information about politics, nations, factions, etc, etc. Now, I won't bore you with the long explanation, but to understand Gremlin's mistake, I need to give you a simplified version. There are vampires, there are rebels fighting the vampires, and then there are traitors. Members of the hunted races who sold out their own people and joined the vampire army as a way to save their own skin. These traitors had a faction, and I think it was called the Dragon Guard or something like that. Gremlin was not speaking to the rebel army. He was speaking to the Dragon Guard, but he thought that the Dragon Guard was our army. So when Gremlin said, Who wants to crack some vampire skulls? And the DM responded with a worried, Are you sure you want to do this? Gremlin responded with a confident, Absolutely! The Dragon Guard all looked at Gremlin, then drew their guns and fired. Gremlin, now realizing his mistake, managed to dodge enough incoming fire to make it out of the bar. But he was now being chased, limping along on 5 HP. In a last ditch effort, he ducked into an alleyway and tried to hide in a crawl space. He rolled for stealth and failed miserably. The dragon guard killed Gremlin and dumped his body in a nearby dumpster. The DM ended the session there. Gremlin's player had no interest in creating a new character. The DM cancelled the campaign a few days later, stating that he had lost interest in the campaign. 
He realized his own mistake for not telling Gremlin straight up that his character would know the difference between his enemy and his allies. I agree that the DM should have stopped and let Gremlin retcon the situation right then and there instead of following through in a firing barrage. I played with Gremlin's player many times after that, but he went back to only being a power gamer with not much interest in roleplay. TLDR a power gamer who wasn't paying close enough attention to the world building gets ganked in an alleyway because he thought he was talking to his allies when he was really talking to enemies. DM follows through with killing the PC instead of stopping and explaining to the player the mistake he was making. Campaign shuts down as a result. End of story. Well, you hate to see it. Stories like this one are always the worst to me. I mean, yeah, on the outside, power gamers are a nuisance. But in reality, all they're trying to do is play the game in a fun way for them. And isn't that supposed to be the whole point of playing a fucking RPG? The DM was presented with an opportunity here where they could have easily encouraged Gremlin's attempt at coming out of his shell. But instead, they went with the knee-jerk reaction of punishing him for not paying attention. Yeah, he did whip out the are you sure line but that's really not enough in situations like this retention of players comes before immersion which is a lot coming from me the dm could have easily said hey your character would know exactly who these people are you would be putting him in danger by saying this are you sure hell even if the dm was super into the immersive aspect of the game he could have had these guys capture gremlin instead then it could have turned into a fun rescue mission where Gremlin could have had more opportunities for roleplay. If you learn anything from this video, learn this. Being a DM is all about turning lemons into lemonade. What you never want to do is shove a lemon into one of your players' mouths and then tell them to start chewing. Now before we go, let's take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art comes from viewer Ferret Trip and depicts a physical manifestation of one of my many f ups. At first, I was confused what exactly was happening here until I rewatched one of my old videos from a month or so back. You see, I'm like a Switch Army knife. I have the uncanny ability to be a complete and utter reprobate in any situation. Switch Army knife. God, I'm an idiot. Hey bro, we gonna play some Super Smash Bros? Hell yeah man, here's your controller! Sick, I uh, what the hell is that? Uh huh, keep laughing buddy, they turned me into a quirky Nintendo controller and they'll do the same to you! Thank you again Ferret Trip for submitting your art! If you want to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my about section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Dream.